Hi there, welcome to Planet Zoo and the Every Animal Franchise Zoo. Today we're expanding into the back end of the zoo with some new animals from a multitude of different biomes. It really is a mixed bag today with some cold climates, some tropical and some temperate as well. No issues from anything we put in last week. Surprisingly, it's all running rather smoothly at the moment, so straight into the first habitat of the day. So let's see... Kuvia's dwarf came in. So, a little crocodilian there. They won't need a lot of room. Always nice when you get an animal that doesn't need a lot of room. In terms of where we're going to put this, this little space we left last week. I think this will go nicely in here. Maybe alongside some facilities as well. Maybe a new restaurant. Oh, that's an idea. Dwarf caimans are a South American species and they are a tropical biome animal. So I was thinking along the lines of having something quite open here. So for fencing, I've gone for low fencing. It's a custom one again. This is metal pole and the rounded pole at the top, the wooden natural rounded pole in the middle. I've got the natural rope, which I thought worked quite well as part of the fencing. Nearly half of the caiman's terrain requirements is water. Obviously, being a crocodilian, they need water to bask in. The setup I've got here lends itself well to having that water reach over right to the back end of the barrier. Even without the hard shelter or planting, they're already looking really happy in this place, so I think it was going well at this stage. The hard shelter I've built in here, it's quite small. The caiman's don't need a lot of hard shelter. It's also quite low to the ground because their hitbox is quite low as well and the keepers don't need to get in here to clean up. The vacuum that they use can, it will go through walls basically, so a small space like this you don't need to worry about the keeper being able to get in there. For this habitat, the mud bath takes up so much room because the habitat is quite small. I definitely still wanted to put one in here, so I decided to make this a main feature of the habitat. I've pushed it right to the water's edge and I've built the rock work around it. You have to be really careful with enrichment items like this to make sure the animals can still use it. If you get too creative with your rock work and the planting and stuff, sometimes they won't use it. So I was very careful with this one to make sure it was still accessible for the caimans. For the planting, I was getting close to the limit of what the caimans could cope with in terms of space because the rock work had taken up an awful lot of the space. So there's a few bits and bobs here or there, not as much as I'd want. That seems like a common theme for me in the habitat to do. So here we are, Kuvia's dwarf caiman habitat. And came in here having a lovely bask in the mud bath there, exactly what I wanted them to do. The water doesn't reach quite to the edge of the habitat because of the pathway. You can only tell when you're on the habitat side though. Once you're path side, it looks like it reaches almost to the edge of the path in there. So I'm happy with that. Oh, bit of lag. Probably the game saving. Hey ho. I recolored the water to make it a bit browner than the original water. Feels more natural. The hard shelter. As you can see, the caimans do go inside this and they do use it. In all, I'm going to put this on my list as one of the fun habitats to make. Not too many challenges and I enjoyed decorating it. Now, you may have noticed I've not just put this new habitat into this space. I filled the whole corner with a new facility as well. A couple new exhibit boxes for some new exhibit animals that are coming up very soon. This is attached to a brand new restaurant backing directly onto the Cayman habitat. Oh, but here's trouble. Guests trying to view the caimans from all the way back here. Well, that's going to put my rating down. That's going to be a terrible view from all the way over here. There is a path goes around right at the front of them, you know. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, brand new restaurant. And it's popular enough. I've called it Marco's because that's the name of our male caiman that we just put in. So a nice nod to that, and when Marcos passes away, we'll put a plaque up on here somewhere that says it's in memory of Marcos. So, with that corner filled in, I'd say it's about time we got to a brand new habitat. What do we have next? Oh, the doll sheep. Right up in the top of Canada there, so very cold. So in terms of where we're putting this, I think if we go back to where we put the cougar in, this is already mountainous up here. So 
I reckon we can get another mountain biome right here. Stop everything. I've just started the game up and it's telling me that a wild dog has escaped. And I find this. Flying wild dog. Okay, it's something very weird going on. I'm hoping that was just a weird loading glitch. We've never had an issue with the wild dogs before, so I reckon it's just something's happened as the game was loading. Hopefully it's a one-off. Fingers crossed, eh? Anyway, fun and games out the way. Back to building for the doll sheep. My idea with this one, I'm going to continue the mountain that we built for the cougar habitat and see if we can get that going into this habitat as well. For the hard shelter, I've made this quite big because I thought that the doll sheep needed um, snow in their biome. I figured it out later when I looked at the terrain that they can have snow, but they don't need it. So my idea was there was going to be sort of a cold refrigerated hard shelter in here. And well, I don't need that, but it turned out OK. So I didn't delete it and make it smaller. I figured we'd just stick with the hard shelter that I'd started on. The guest barrier that I've added for the doll sheep, this is stolen from the alpine ibex habitat that we made a couple of weeks ago. A nice simple straight line for this one, which made it really easy to put in. The little mountainous section that I've put in, it fit in quite well. I was surprised, I thought I might struggle with the space, but there's enough space in here to keep the doll sheep happy. Just like when I did the cougar habitat, you've got to be really careful with the rock work because you have to make sure the sheep can actually jump up it, otherwise they wouldn't be able to get to the top. When I put them in at first, they made a beeline for the hill and yeah, it, they were having a bit of trouble getting up some of the rocks there. So just a little adjustment needed to make sure it was traversable. For the plants and trees, tried to keep this similar to the habitat next door, just so it doesn't look weird when it's trying to fit in with the landscape. Putting these next to each other probably was a really good idea. So this is the completed dull sheep habitat. Hopefully they don't mind being put next to the cougar there. Might scare them if they can hear the cougars. In terms of the layout of this habitat, I'm pleased with how it turned out. The doll sheep do use the entirety of the habitat. We've got stuff at the top of the mountain, there's stuff inside the hard shelter, and they'll traverse their way quite happily across all of this. I've got a feeder enrichment at the top as well, so I had to make sure that the staff could get up here too. And here we go, get to see the sheep making their way up. I do love the sound that when they're walking across the rocks, it makes that clickety clack sound when they're walking on the stone. Very cool that the game thinks about stuff like that. I've made sure we've got a view inside the hard shelter and inside here, there is a little bedding area there for the sheep to have a rest. I'd say that is dull sheep done. So on to the next animal. What do we have up next? So strictly there's an exhibit animal up next, the Danube crested newt, but that's an exhibit animal and we've already got a space in there that I put in next to that new restaurant. So we'll get to that, but first of all, I think we should do the doll first. The space where we're putting the doll, I'm going to say we go back over to this side of the zoo and it can go right in here opposite the plain zebra habitat. Creating the doll habitat, I was having a bit of an identity crisis here because the doll is from Asia region and it can be in temperate biome. So what I've been theming along the lines of here is being more tropical and maybe a bit of grassland in here as well. But it's this very light wood sort of more suited to a hot climate. So I was tempted to go back and do some of the more temperate style stuff I was doing, which it means going back to the cursed um, breeze block and that definitely wouldn't fit in here. So I've stuck with the light wooded stuff and I'm just trying to force it to make it work with the doll. The one thing I did like about this habitat was creating the barrier, the guest barrier for this one. The dolls don't mind human interaction. So I was able to use the normal glass panel rather than the one way glass. And overall, I just like the style of this guest barrier here. It feels like something you might see in an actual real life zoo. This was pretty much the only thing I really liked about creating this habitat. The dolls need a lot of space, so I did the trick with putting some anti-space at the back, which didn't really help that much. It still feels really empty in here, and 
I guess the thing is, I like to show that creating habitats, it doesn't always come naturally. Sometimes you will create something that you think, oh, this is a bit pants. But it's the fact that you keep going and you keep trying and it gives you ideas for creating something better next time. I really wanted to show with this series that it's not all about making everything perfect first time round. You'll have good days and you'll have bad days. And I really wanted to show that we're all in the same boat in terms of that stuff. It's carrying on that's important. My end goal with this zoo is to squeeze every single animal in the game into the zoo and by hella high water we're gonna get there. So let's take a look what we did for the doll in the end. Oh well we were about to do a tour for the doll but <sighs> there's a bell ringing again. There's an alarm that means something has escaped. Oh dear right what are we dealing with this time? Wild dog again oh dear that's not good we already had that problem once i haven't changed anything why is it being an issue all of a sudden wait no it's because the dog's still boxed up oh i am so sorry <laughs> that's my fault i thought it was gonna unbox itself oh no it's been boxed up all that time i've been building oh poor doggy i'm so sorry hopefully no harm done yeah i'm sure you're fine well, I feel awful now. Let's just get back to the tour of the other dogs we've put in. Uh, no. Check that. The alarm's still going. What? Why? There's something very wrong in the zoo today. Right. What else has gone wrong? I'm a leopard escape. Again? Those leopards can't be trusted. If you ended up this time. Oh, the alpine ibex. Look at that. That was so close. You are a very naughty kitty. That was nearly a dead Ipex there. All right, let's get you back in your box and figure out how you're escaping. Check navigable area. Oh, okay. So you're getting up the back wall. Oh, right, I added the staff buildings here and it clips through to this habitat a little bit. And I didn't even think to check if they could get up there. Yeah, this should stop you getting past. Let's see. Wait for it to recalculate. That's better. No more escaping from you, please. I can't cope with it. No more. Back on track. Delayed dull tour. Ah, photo opportunity. Right in front of the post, though. Move over to the other side a little bit and you'd be able to see. Sometimes the guests are just so silly. You'll have a perfect view for them right a couple of inches from where they're already standing. And they'll complain that the view's terrible because they're standing in front of a post. Dole here, going for a little wander. Stopped. I think he saw me. Oh no, just wanted to poop on camera. No, we don't do that on this channel. We don't look at the pooping. Right, something else to look at. Yeah, so a big hard shelter in here. It's a bit of a big empty box at the moment. I have got in the doggy paddling pool and left plenty of space around it this time in the hopes that they actually use it. Would love to dress this up with rocks and stuff, but alas, they won't use it if you do. Whole enclosure does feel a little empty right now. I'll have to look into that. Oh no. Oh, it's the dreaded bell again. I don't understand. There's no way they could get out of here. But yeah, it's definitely coming from this gate. Uh, oh, oh, what are you doing out here? Taking yourself for a bit of a walkies. How on earth did you get out? There's nowhere here for you to escape. Right, let's look at the traverse and terrain thing again. Um, what? What? Why? That's, that's so strange. I have got a custom barrier here, but the barrier doesn't go out that far. That shouldn't be. Uh, well, I guess I'll move the barrier back a bit in case there's something going on with that. Let's try that again. No, still saying there's an escape point there. Oh, that really shouldn't be. Um, I think I'm going to have to restart the game because something very strange is going on here. 
Okay, I've restarted the game and it was still glitching. So I've come up with a sort of solution. <laughs> I've just slapped another barrier at that point where I keep saying that they're escaping and it, well, this is working, but yeah, <laughs> we've got this weird triangle looking thing now of like a space that's not being used. Got a problem? Fight it with more absurdity. That's what I say. Anyway, I think that's probably it for the Dole tour today. They've had me demented, so I'd say move on. What I do want to show you, the exhibit space next to the new restaurant is occupied. Two new exhibit species in here. We've got the Danube crested newt that we talked about before. Great species to fit into this little corner. Let's see if we can see them. There we go. Tiny, tiny little newt there. Good thing about this exhibit box, it's open on three of its sides, so guests shouldn't be complaining that they can't see the newt. The other exhibit box, this is housing the Diamondback Terrapin. Hey, easy to spot this one. Can't miss the little guys there. Going for a bit of a float, aren't they? First time I've placed the Terrapin in the game, so yeah, it's a new one for me too. Right, that brings us to, you guessed it, new animal time. So get the old Zoopedia up and see what we've got. Interesting, we've got the Dingo. The Dingo's requirements are startlingly similar to the doll, so I think we're going to put that next door to it. There's also a couple of other exhibit species to go in as well, and we've already made room for those in the little facilities building we made in the last episode, so they'll be going in there. And the Dingo's, yeah, they're going to go right next door to the doll's. And, you know, I think I'm even going to copy the same style of habitat. I feel like I've boxed myself into doing this light desert bleached wood panel effect. So I'll get on with that and we'll see how that goes. A relatively easy habitat to create here, considering we already created the style of everything that we're putting in here in the previous habitat. Something I have changed up, I really wasn't happy with the hard shelter in the dole habitat. So for this one, I've taken a blueprint of a hard shelter I created for the dingoes in my Australian zoo that I was happy with. I also borrowed some of the rock formations that I created for that one, but um, I'm not sure on this one. I think I probably should have gone with the lighter desert rock rather than the red desert rock because it really doesn't fit in. Even though it fits into a biome that the dingoes would be in, it really stands out in this zoo that we're making. So yeah, if I do go back and redo stuff, I might go and swap out all of those rocks for the lighter colored one. This is the finished dingo habitat. And I like that the barrier, the guest barrier goes across two of the sides. So the guests get a really good view of the dingoes from any angle, really. We've got similar enrichment in here to the dole. So another doggy paddling pool. And obviously I've left the sides free again. So hopefully they will use it. One of the best enrichment animations in the game is the dingoes and the dolls splashing about in this pool, definitely. Speaking of, let's see if we can see a dingo. Yeah, there we go, one over there. You gonna look at the camera? No. All right, I guess we'll move the camera then. That's better. Very pretty doggy there, isn't it? Oh yes, so the hard shelter I've put into this habitat, this is one I created for another zoo, it was my Australian zoo when the DLC pack came out. It's a concrete shell with louvered Australian wood pieces for the outside. That's to make it seem cooler inside. You use louvered wood like this when you want to create shade. Hey, and there's the other dingo now. You can really see the color differences there that they've added now. One's kind of white and the other one's that sandy brown color. It's great. The variety of color shades really adds something to the game, I feel. So yeah, that's the dingo habitat. As you can see here, the dingoes need an awful lot of room. It's a bit weird, isn't it, that they need that much room? When you compare to, like, the plain zebra, oryx, and warthog habitat over the road, that's the same size, and that's housing three varieties of animals. I guess the dogs like to roam. Anyway, let's go take a look at the new exhibit habitats we've put in. We already had the death adder in here, now the other two exhibit boxes are open too. This is the Eastern Blue Tongue Lizard. 
And how cool is that? It's burrowing. I didn't know they did that. You can tell I didn't place a lot of exhibit species before I opened this zoo. <laughs> Should be another one in here. Yeah, there we go. Basking on a rock. Enjoying the warmth of the habitat there. The other new exhibit we've opened, that is the Eastern Brown Snake. Ooh, they get burrows as well. Huh, you learn something new every day. Aha, another easy to spot exhibit animal there, right at the back. Yeah, you can definitely see where this one is. Chilling on the rock. I did see the other one, yep, yeah, right at the very back there as well. Hopefully not planning an escape. <laughs> I think we've had enough of those today, haven't we? Still can't believe I didn't know there was exhibit burrows until now. Being a bit of an adventure today, all the escapes and the glitching. The bigger the zoo gets, I fear there's going to be a lot more to come of that. We'll deal with it in the same way. Confusion and laughter, obviously. What else can you do? Regardless, I hope you've enjoyed what we've built here today. And can forgive the maybe tiny bit of the dingo and the dole habitat looking a bit lacklustre there at the end. Can't win them all, I say. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.